Hello, welcome to Life Coaching on the Move. I'm your host, Dawn Fisk, life coach, trainer, speaker, podcaster, YouTuber, Um, have been for 17 years. This is a podcast about real clients. I often tell stories from coaching scenarios or my own stories or the family. Uh, I I give examples to make it all come alive rather than theory-based. Its aim is to give you tips and techniques that you can use in your everyday lives in order to increase your happiness, your well-being, uh, improve your mental health, improve your uh, outlook in life, your confidence, your self-esteem, your success, and so on. Um, So uh, it's very real. I do not edit. I don't make it perfect. I make it very raw, very authentic, very real. I just think and talk out loud to you um, about a certain subject. Today's subject actually is about how to be successful, how to be more successful or be successful. Um, if you are new to the podcast, then welcome along. It is fantastic that you found this. Uh, there are at least 44, something like that, past episodes for you to go back into the back catalogue and listen to if you want to. There's all sorts of subjects there. Um, how to be resilient, how to bounce back, how to improve your thoughts, how to overcome uh, negativity, um, how to remain positive Um, there's bits about coping and living with anxiety there's all sorts of um, uh, subjects that how to improve your communication your confidence generally uh, your results I, I can't think there's a host of them just an array of them so do feel free to go back and listen to them the first few episodes the first up to 10 episodes really are also quite key in so far as they they lay out the foundation upon which I base all of my coaching really so they're a great place to start but every episode's got something user friendly and helpful for you to take away if you find these podcast episodes helpful The only thing I ask in return is that you pass on the word to um, friends, colleagues or associates because I am certain one or other of them will be struggling with similar and different um, issues at the moment. At the time of recording this, we're in the middle of COVID-19, so I know lots of people are struggling with all sorts of things, mental health, focus, um, structure, time management, routine positivity, all those sorts of things. So it could be really, really what they need. Even if you're not aware that they're struggling, they may be struggling by themselves um, and keeping a stiff upper lip and not sharing it. So perhaps put it on your um, your social media or take a screenshot and post it um, and write a review if you can. If you're listening to it on a platform that allows you to write a review, please do, because that means uh, other people, strangers, completely just surfing the net are much more likely to find it. Something about the algorithms. I'm not really great at marketing, but it puts you up in the rankings and it means that others will find it and it clearly will be something that will help or of interest because that must be what they're searching for. So thank you for that. That's all I ask in return. Please feel free to visit the website www.milestone-coaching.co.uk to look for and at lots of other things on the website the blog, um, YouTube channel. If one of your friends is struggling and they don't like or don't know how to listen to podcasts, then there are all sorts of much more theory-based content where I do uh, slides and visuals and graphics and things um, on various, again, live coaching subjects on YouTube. You can follow me there on the website. Um, So... I think it's probably best that I just crack on to this week's uh, topic all about how to be successful. So today's podcast is all about success, how to guarantee yourself success. Uh, And who doesn't want a little bit more of that? If I could bottle it and give it to you as a gift... I would, and I know that you would take it. It wouldn't be something you would reject. If I could offer you perhaps um, a wish, um, if, or fulfil a wish, if I said to you, what is it that you wish you could achieve? Um, if you could wave a magic wand, if time and money and all of that were not an obstacle at all, what would you like to achieve? Um, a, you would know what it was. B, you wouldn't reject that chance. 
So ask yourself that first of all. What is it that if you could wave a magic wand or I could grant you a wish, would you love to achieve? What would you like success in? Is it to uh, have that dream date and find your dream partner? Is it to change your career and uh, succeed as X, Y and Z, a lawyer or uh, a doctor or um, a vet or... um, a mountaineer or um, importing wine or being a pig farmer in Devon, whatever it is, what is it? What would you love to do? Um, Would it be that you would like a book on the bookshelves? You'd like a book published or you'd like to write poetry or you'd like some of your paintings that you've been doing and you've just hidden away in a cupboard because you don't want to show anybody your paintings, but you'd love to get those on the market and someone to buy them or the jewellery that you've been making, just quietly making for yourself, your own pleasure, but you won't sell because you, you fear people wouldn't want them. Or cards that you've been beautifully illustrating or um, cakes that you bake but you don't think, uh, you spend hours decorating, you put photos of them on Instagram and stuff but you won't actually go into it as a, as a business because you fear people wouldn't buy from you, you fear people wouldn't like your product. Um, this is commonly what I hear from clients when I'm working one-to-one with clients who know what they want to achieve, who love doing it. They're very good at it. They break, they decorate beautiful wedding cakes or birthday cakes or celebration cakes or make great art or creativity, or illustrations, poetry. They're great at singing, but they don't audition. They're great at performing in the Amdram, but they won't go any further. Um, they love gardening, but they can't give up their office job because phew, who would employ me? And stuff like that. You know, they know what floats their boat. They know what excites them. They know what they love doing, but they don't do that. Instead, they get on that commuter train in the rat race and follow the nine to five um, zombies that we're all just existing to produce some money, to pay our bills, to put the food on the table. But we don't love it. We're not passionate about it. In fact, many people are dreading it instead of what they love and their passion. For fear, perhaps, of rejection, for fear of perhaps failure, Um, that people won't want them, people won't buy from them, people wouldn't spend money on them, I wouldn't want people to reject me because it's my jewellery and how would I feel if they walked straight past, how would I feel if they didn't like the cards or the paintings. They put themselves into it and they fear failure and they fear rejection. Um, And so they hold themselves back. Now, is this you? Is, do, do you relate to this? Um, do you not go on dates for fear that they won't like you, so you don't even try? Um, do you not attend something or try something or put something out there, your music or your, uh, your creativity, for fear of it um, not being liked by people? Do you not apply for those jobs, that advert that you've seen because, well, somebody else will be better at it than me. I won't succeed. I won't get picked. I'll I'll fail in the interview. Then I'll feel awful. So there's no point. So I won't apply. So for this podcast is all about how to succeed. And the truth is the way to succeed is to actually fail. Because the more we fail, the more it means we're having a go. And the more we fail, the more we're out there trying. And the more we fail, the easier it becomes to live uh, with our obstacles or overcome our obstacles or live with, and I put this in quote marks, rejection. We've got to, we've got to fail to succeed. We've got to be turned down by others, if you want to label it that, in order to be accepted by more. Because we've got to be out there. No one will buy our paintings. No one will buy our beautiful jewellery or our beautifully decorated cakes or employ us or date us or um, put us in a show or something like that, unless they know what we can do, unless they've seen our skill set, unless we've actually risked it and put it out there. 
So we have to be prepared to fail in order to succeed. Because if not, if we're not prepared to fail or be rejected at times, or be knocked back or turned down at times, if we're not prepared to do that, I can guarantee absolute certainty we will ultimately fail. Ultimately, we won't ever sell any of that jewellery or um, produce that we make or um, our skill set if we don't put it out there. That's absolute certain failure. So the, the, the absolute way of achieving what we then most fear is by not doing it. The chance of succeeding, the way to succeed is to take risks is to accept that there may well be some people who don't like what we produce or um, write about or sing about or uh, um, our skill sets or our knowledge or our manner, anything. Um, But what we have to realise is actually that's all right. That's okay. What's the worst going to happen? We're not going to die. We're not going to get physically injured. All that's going to happen is one person's opinion of us or our work or our ability or our skill set or our manner, one person's opinion doesn't fit, isn't, isn't the right fit. The hand and the glove don't work together. But that's okay. It's not us they're rejecting because they don't really know us. It's just what we have put out there that may not fit their need. And if we look at it like that... You know, um, lots of people, lots of my clients will say, yeah, but I'm a perfectionist. Sometimes I think this, I'm a perfectionist, I won't do it unless it's perfect, is an excuse. Because by saying I I can't, I'm a perfectionist, that cake's not as good, it's not good enough, or the jewellery or or whatever, my gardening's not good enough, etc. I'm a perfectionist, I I wouldn't want to charge somebody for this. That's an excuse, that's another excuse to prevent them being turned down, to prevent them having to face potential failure or potential knockback or potential rejection. And therefore, they're safe because they don't have to put themselves on the line. It's an excuse. Um, When I was doing this podcast, I could have told myself, but I don't have a recording studio. I don't have an editing suite. I don't have all the graphics to go with it. I don't have a marketeer that can market it. Um, What if I run out of content? What if, and the biggest one of all is, what if it's rubbish? What if people don't like it? Well, I'm certain there are people that maybe tune in and get bored within five minutes, tune out again, never come back. I'm certain that prob- that happens. That's okay. All the time I tell myself that's okay, I'm comfortable with that. I know that I can carry on putting it out there because it will speak to some people. Even if it speaks just to one person and helps them, it's been worth it. And therefore... One person has accepted it and found it and taken it on board and and enjoyed it. So one person hasn't rejected it or knocked it back. So that's okay. Um, it doesn't matter that my website might not appeal to everybody, that they may visit the website through Google, etc., etc., visit it, look at it, don't like the graphics, don't like the content, don't like the picture of me, and mm, no, that doesn't speak to me. Something doesn't appeal to me. Oh, this one does, though. Oh, this one looks good. I like this one. Phone that one, book it. That's fine. That's absolutely fine because I can't be the right person for everybody. Just as, you know, if we're dating, we don't want hundreds of potential partners because that would make life very, very complicated and unmanageable. We want one, hopefully one. Some people might want one or two, (laughs) but... Generally, we're looking for the right one. So we've got to date a few to discard which ones we don't like. And don't forget, you've got some power in that as well, because you're deciding whether that fit is right for you too. When you go for a job, the interview just isn't just about them picking you over and above the competition. It's also about you deciding whether it's a company you want to go for. When you go on those dates... 
it's not just about them. Well, what if they don't like me? What if they don't? What if they're not attracted to me, or they don't find me funny enough, or whatever? It's not just about that. It's two way, because if you focus on what if they don't like me, what if they reject my products or my my um, abilities or whatever it is, whoever it is, what if they reject me? But it's not just about that. It's also about you deciding, well, actually, I don't want to sell my products to those that person because I don't think it suits them. It's not their colour. It's not, you know, I don't want it worn in that way, for example. So don't give that other person or, or those other people the ultimate power because they're just individuals like you. If you are terrified of being rejected or turned down by that employer, that potential date, um, that potential customer, if you if you focus on you know, what if they reject me, you're giving them all the power over you, your results and how you'll feel about it. They don't have that power over you. You have that power over you. You have that power to put your neck on the line and get out there, to push yourself, encourage yourself, take a risk, put your head above the parapet. You also have the power to choose, I actually don't want to sell to them, or I don't want to work for them, or actually I don't want to go out with them. So it's a two-way process. And then nevertheless, whatever happens, if that other person decides it's not for them, they don't want to buy your produce or employ you or whatever, you then have the power to bounce back from that. They don't own your emotions as a result of, sorry, it wasn't for us on this occasion, all the best for your future career. It's they, they don't then have your emotions in their hands. You have your emotions in your hands. And so what we've got to remember is actually the key to success is the ability to embrace, welcome um, and encourage failure. Um, because that makes you one step or more closer to success. That increases hugely your chances of success it makes you in the driving seat it gives you the power um to continue to keep bouncing back if you think about when you were a toddler and you were learning to walk and you were learning to use the spoon with food on it you made a a terrible mess food everywhere all over your hair all over your face all over the 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 tray of the high chair all over the floor around it if you had a dog when you were a toddler, the dog would sit at the base of your high chair waiting, knowing that you were going to drop food and splash food and everything. Um, but it didn't matter. You were learning. You had to make mistakes. You'd miss your mouth. You, your hand and eye and mouth and coordination and muscles and control weren't strong enough um, at first. But the more you tried and the more mistakes you made, the closer you got to mastering it. So you when you were crawling you would stand up you'd hold yourself you'd let go you'd wobble you weren't strong enough yet you weren't skilled enough yet and you would fall down bump down onto your nappy sitting down on the floor you'd pull back up you'd bump down again you kept doing that and it was only through if you want to call it failure that you learnt as that toddler the skill set required and how to hold yourself how to balance and how to lift your leg and etc it was the failings that gave you the success it was the failings that gave you the strength it was the ability to get back up and try again and fall and get back up and try again and fall that ultimately got you there And that is exactly the same now, whether it's about dating, whether it's about employment, whether it's about um, launching your own thing, your own your own little company, business project, whatever it is that that would be your wish, your hope. Only you can push yourself forward. Only you can get those bumps and knocks and fall down on your nappy, but get back up again and handle a rejection, if you want to call it that, and learn from it. What did I learn? Okay, I didn't do, I didn't get that job. Why didn't I get that job? Ask for feedback. Consider giving yourself feedback. What did I do? Where did I go? Etc. Etc. Learn from it, and then apply for another one. If it were a date, what do you think 
they didn't like about you or what didn't you like about them? Why didn't you click? What was it? Was it just no chemistry between the two of you? Did you have absolutely nothing in common whatsoever? No, no shared interests? Then fine, it's not you that's being rejected. It's the fit that's being rejected. It's a two-way thing. Um, so don't keep using the excuse of I'm a perfectionist, therefore I won't try, therefore I stay safe. You've got to get out of your comfort zone. Um, I realised I did this the other day, actually. Sometimes when I do recordings, I then promote them via Facebook because I don't have too much of a marketing budget, so I can't actually advertise, put money behind them. And um, so I use Facebook quite a lot. And I realised I'm following lots of groups and I put them on various platforms and groups. Sometimes these podcast episodes don't feel as strong as other podcast episodes from from my point of view sometimes I just don't feel that I covered enough content or it was useful enough or maybe it's my mindset and because I'm human too but sometimes I think mm, I don't feel as comfortable with that episode as I did last week's or whatever and I realized um, when I look at those ones where I don't feel quite as 100% or 110% about each episode and we're all human we're going to have better ones stronger ones than others I've realized when it doesn't feel I don't feel as confident about the content um, then I don't put it on the local Facebook group for here for the village we've got it like most people most areas there's usually a lo local um, Facebook page or group for your surrounding areas where people put things up for sale or notices, I don't know, about roadworks or school closures in the snow or something like that. And I've realised that when I don't feel 110% about the pe podcast episode for whatever reason, I don't put it on there because I guess um, it's fear of people's judgment. It's, it's not great. I don't want them to listen to that. It wasn't, you know, um, wasn't brilliant or whatever. So I found that I don't post it on the local area because there's too much at stake. There's people on there that would potentially know me and potentially judge me. All this is in quick marks, obviously. <laughs> um, whereas when I feel it's a really strong one, I have subconsciously found, I'll put as I'm going through all the Facebook groups and I'm posting it on there or not, I will comfortably put it on the local area because... I obviously subconsciously feel more confident about the content and um, hope that I wouldn't be as, as... So we're all human. I hope that I wouldn't be as judged negatively. Um, you know, when I first started my blog, when I first started YouTube, um, it's risky because you think, mm, what if it's rubbish and people don't like it and people put comments or whatever. But you... I very quickly learnt that I can either take that on board and hold myself back and never ever do it, or I push through that and put it out there anyway. And, you know, and face that risk, face that rejection from many, many people. There are millions of people in the world. So on YouTube, it's potentially out there for millions of people to judge. And there are some cruel people out there uh, that won't hold back. Or <laughs> But... If it's helped one or two people, it's been worth it. And so you can talk yourself around that. It's worth the risk. Um, so we can learn, I've learned that... Oh, and the bizarre thing is, actually, those podcasts where I don't feel they're necessarily... Uh, oh, that's not my strongest one for whatever reason. They bizarrely are often the ones that I will get some uh, an email from somebody listening or, or a phone call or something. Someone booking some coaching. They'll make contact with me and say, I've just been listening to your podcast and it just resonated or it just spoke to me. It was exactly what I've been feeling. Could we book in some coaching? And yet I ironically had felt it wasn't a very strong one. So our opinion of ourselves is never um, reflective necessarily of what others will think anyway, because we are all different. So some of the episodes will appeal to different people for whatever they're going through than others. Uh, when I judge it as a good one, they may not and vice versa. So we have just got to be comfortable with who we are and what we're doing, what we put out there. 
what we apply for, what we try, what we risk, what we dip with toe in, and be prepared to have some weaker ones, stronger ones, some strong interviews, some strong dates, some weaker ones. But each and every one can be a learning. So I can look back and learn from each of those. Also, don't put perceptions in your mind, your own made up obstacles of things like, oh, yeah, but I'm a perfectionist or I just don't have time or it's too risky or whatever. One, one of the um, obstacles at the moment, because at the time of recording this, we're in the middle of the COVID-19 lockdown um, still, even though we thought we were entering phase two, but it seems not really, not, not a great deal has changed. Um, so I, I, it's interesting to see how my client base that I'm working with at the moment seems to fall into one or other two camps so half of my client um, group um, are proceeding and progressing with their career whereas the other half have um, are are struggling with their career because of perhaps the COVID-19 situation Um, maybe they've been laid off or they fear they might be laid off or um, even if they hate their job at the moment, they're not going elsewhere because they feel there's nothing out there. Students who now are not um, at college or at university aren't applying for jobs because they don't believe there's anything out there. There's this there's this false perception that we're in a terrible crisis. There's no employment, there are no job opportunities. Whereas my other group of, um, and they're resigned to that idea, so they're giving in, they're not trying. They're just accepting that as a reality. Not woe is me or feeling sorry for themselves, but that's just, they're saying it to themselves as a fact. That's okay, difficult times, won't, I can't, can I, because of the difficult times. Um, so I'm decorating at home and I'm gardening and things like that. And that's fine, they're okay. However, the other half of the group of my clients are coming to me for career coaching. Uh, on Saturday, I was working with one client Um, preparing them for an interview this week for a job that they desperately love. It totally has their name written all over them. It would be perfect for them. So over Zoom, we were preparing them um, for the interview, covering lots of ground, tips and techniques, etc., ready for a strong interview because really keen on this role. Um, so, uh, and another one that had just uh, one last week I was working with who's just started a role. Working from home, it's all remote, it's all online and things like that, but just starting f- to work from home. And we were covering different things about uh, colleagues and um, already things that they've discovered um, that they may need to address within the role, within their responsibility, uh, that they may need to flag up in meetings to rectify them and stuff like that because of policies and legislations and stuff. And that's part of their role. And how will they communicate that to the existing team, for example? So I've got half the group that are employed and half that aren't. Um, and and they're progressing in their career. There are interviews. They're ringing me for uh, career coaching, preparing for interviews, helping on their CVs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so what I'm saying here is, don't think for a minute that just because we're in COVID nineteen, there aren't opportunities. Are there? There absolutely are. I can see that because there are people having interviews now, starting new jobs now on my client base. Maybe I maybe that's because I thought there wouldn't be interviews or opportunities. Uh, perhaps I fell into that trap of assuming there wouldn't be people recruiting or anything like that, but they are. So if you are thinking and assuming there's no point moving forward now, there's no point trying to apply now, don't don't let that be a false obstacle. There are so many opportunities out there. There are roles out there. Um, there are careers out there. And even if it's not the career that you necessarily want, there are different careers out there. Um, you know, there are all sorts of things from construction, that's work in manufacturing, delivering um, shop work, um, care work, through to fruit picking, farming, uh, gardening, 
I'm on, as I've just said, lots of Facebook pages and lots of people are putting on their notices. Does anybody know a painter, a decorator that could come and paint and decorate if we kept away from them? Does anybody know out there somebody that could come and cut all our hedges uh, for us and do some gardening? I mean, in fact, there was one at the weekend. Does anybody know anybody out there that could go to in such and such an area that would go and do my elderly mother who's frail garden we can't go there we we're not allowed to travel and she's vulnerable and in a lockdown could they um for a fee a good fee go and do all the gardening for her so that we weren't so worried and she wasn't getting stressed about it there are opportunities out there you just got to be out there looking and what half of my group are not they're not looking because they think the doors are closed so they're not exploring the opportunities. I know from all the groups that I'm on in Facebook, um, uh, Mums Working From Home UK group and things like that, there are so many opportunities and so um, entrepreneurial and selling opportunities and online opportunities and being virtual assistant opportunities and stuff like that. Do not think for a minute that it's all over out there. It's grim out there and there's no employment. There is and there are my son he started his first job as as an adult as a full-time job last monday now um you know he's just left college lots of college leavers assume there's nothing out there there are we've just got to be out there looking we've just got to keep our eyes open and be prepared to accept maybe things we didn't want so, and, and as I've said before, even if this isn't his career forever, it will open doors that will link on to other things, then will link on to other things, that then will link on to other things. We've always got to be thinking, well, no matter what we do, we are opening potential doors for later things. We're um, widening our connections and our contacts. We're widening our experience and our CV. We're widening our mind and our skill set. So it doesn't matter what we necessarily do. It doesn't have to be forever but it means again we're out there physically out of our comfort zone taking taking opportunities um being prepared to take risks being prepared to try um so what i'm saying here is the sure way back to the original statement at the, the beginning how to succeed well it's to be prepared to fail that's the first way to succeed. If you're not prepared to fail, you, you are cutting your chances massively ex of succeeding in the first place. Um, failure is one of the most incredible drivers to success. It sets you on a new path. I was thinking about this the other day because the cupboard in, my, in the bathroom under the sink um, has got a leak. And I didn't know that until I moved a few items in there. And I realised that the water where it had been trickling had found, it created little channels for itself, the little trickles. And where it hit a wall, because there might have been a few bottles of something lined up, it had created a channel around it and threw into a different channel. And that's a bit like failure, really. It sets a path for us to follow if you hit a wall down that little route like the water trickling you'll find another little avenue where the the flow can go um so we've got to have a go we've got to be that toddler that gets back up keeps getting back up and gets stronger and stronger and more able to walk um so Get out there and have a go, whether it's dating, applying for a job, um, something that you love doing, putting your stuff out there, have a go and tweak your strategy. If someone walks past and doesn't want to buy it or somebody doesn't want to read it or listen to it, um, keep going, keep trying other channels, trying other avenues, tweaking it. What can I learn from that? Maybe I need to, what you know, tighten the podcast or tighten the blog or be more specific or be shorter or be longer or go straight to the point or waffle less or whatever. Ask for feedback. Um, you learn so much from failings. Um, and you come back stronger every time. Every time you learn something, when you've had a go, you come back stronger. It's, it's, the, it's the growth mindset, which is big at the moment. You can read loads around the growth mindset as opposed to the fixed mindset. The growth mindset is 
all about constantly learning and tweaking and learning and improving and learning and growing. Um, and that's what we do through our mistakes or our failings or our rejections, whatever you want to label them. And they're all horrible labels, but they are just words. Um, then it, we are getting closer and closer to the success that we want. Um, so don't give the other people the power over you. You've got the power over your own reactions. And I love this phrase, um, this quote that I thought I would just end on, really, um, because what I want to end on, really, is to say to you, go out there, stop the self-talk, stop talking yourself out of it, stop being in your own way, stop holding yourself back, push yourself forward, tell yourself, I'm going to get out there and fail today, knowing that it's getting you closer to success. See it as a good thing, see it as a positive thing. Because, and the quote that I love is, Winners are not afraid of losing, but losers are. Um, so winners are not afraid of losing, whether it's athletes, whether it's top performers, top entrepreneurial businessmen and women, um, whoever you read autobiographies about, they've not been afraid of losing. They, in fact, many of them have lost and failed many times, many, many of them. Um, so winners are not afraid of losing, but losers are because they don't even give a try. They, they don't even give a, a go and don't get themselves out of that. their comfort zones, their safety net. Um, just go for it. So I'm going to end it there and um, encourage you to go forward this week. Go and make some. F In fact, tell yourself every single morning, I'm going to make some mistakes today. I'm going to fail something today, but see it as a positive. And go for it. Just make mistakes and learn from it. Welcome them because it, you are getting closer to where you want to be with every single mistake or rejection that you make. So enjoy your failings. Enjoy your mistakes. Message me. Share them with me. And share your successes, of course. I'd love to hear from you. Dawn at milestone-coaching.co.uk uh, or visit the website www.milestone-coaching.co.uk dot co dot uk and you can press contact me there's loads on the um, website if you want to have a look and of course if you would like a one-off coaching session uh, a, a normal full coaching session that's fine or if you want a little tiny micro um, coaching session of half an hour where we really beam in quickly on one small area i'm offering those through covid19 as well so if not if i don't hear from you have a great week and I look forward to talking to you on next week's episode of Life Coaching on the Move.